Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 24th of March. Total coronavirus cases in India rise over 480 amid lockdown. US cuts $1 billion in Afghanistan aid over political impasse. And Nepal goes under lockdown over coronavirus fears. And now for all the details. The total number of coronavirus infection-related death toll in India rose to 9 on Tuesday, while the total number of active cases crossed over 480. Meanwhile, as the country entered the second day of lockdown to curb the coronavirus outbreak, India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman announced a slew of relief measures for taxpayers and businesses. Amid lockdown in several parts of India to control the spread of coronavirus, the COVID-19 tally crossed 480, according to Indian Council of Medical Research, with first case coming to the fore from northeast Manipur province on Tuesday. Meanwhile, amid shutdown, India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Tuesday announced various statutory and regulatory compliance relief measures. Sitaraman extended the dates of income tax, goods and services tax return deadlines and waived off late fee and penalty as well. The Finance Ministry is already working on economic package to mitigate the impact of coronavirus on the Indian economy. You may have a debit card from a bank, a particular bank, but you will now be allowed to without additional charges to be able to draw cash from any other bank's ATM for the next three months. The next one, there shall not be any minimum balance requirement fee. Meanwhile, Indians on Tuesday said they would abide by the government's call to stay indoors to prevent the spread of coronavirus cases across the country. The lockdown is good, it's public Health researchers have warned that more than a million people in India could be infected with the coronavirus by mid-May. India has already severed international flight links and domestic air services will stop at midnight in a bid to halt the spread. The Shaheen Bagh protest site in India's capital New Delhi, where protesters for several months have been agitating against citizenship law, was cleared by police on Tuesday. This came as Delhi is under a lockdown until the end of the month to halt the spread of coronavirus and public gatherings of more than five people have been banned. Amid nationwide lockdown of a highly contagious novel coronavirus or COVID-19, Indian capital New Delhi's Shaheen Bagh, heart of protest against Citizenship Amendment Act, was cleared on Tuesday morning after 101 days. Delhi police broke up the longest-running protest, citing a ban on public gatherings because of the coronavirus outbreak. Hundreds of police in riot gear surrounded the protesters early on Tuesday and told them to leave. They took down tents and billboards at the protest site with bulldozers. This is a very dangerous situation for COVID-19. तो कुछ जो शरारती तत्व हैं शुरू में उन्होंने प्रॉब्लम करने की कोशिश की लेकिन फिर उनको हमने डिटेंशन में लिया और उसके बाद फिर हमने आगे के साइट क्लेरेंस की कार्रवाई की और अभी तक जो साइट क्लेरेंस की कार्रवाई है वो पीसफुल चल रही है और हमें उम्मीद है कि जल्दी हम लोग क्लियर कर लेंगे Dozens of people, many of them women, have been staging a sit-in protest since early December on a street in the Shine Bark neighborhood which has become a focal point for opposition to the law seen as discriminating against Muslims. Five local ladies were sitting there, but no one was sitting there. They had damaged the protest and damaged the protest. This is why Shine Bark public is very angry. और बहुत ज़्यादा गुस्से में चलिए वो बात छोड़िए अभी कोरोना का मामला है उसको भी हम समर्थन कर रहे हैं तो 
आप जो लोग डिटेन किए हैं लेडीज उनको आप छोड़िए The Citizenship Amendment Act which eases the path for non-Muslims from neighboring Muslim majority countries to gain citizenship triggered weeks of protest after it was passed in December. At least 78 people have been killed in demonstrations triggered by the law across the country. In is from Pakistan Pakistan on Tuesday reported over 900 COVID-19 cases with its Sindh and Punjab provinces continue to record new infection cases amid nationwide lockdown Pakistani army earlier ordered the deployment of all available troops and medical resources according to requirements in order to contain the fast spreading deadly virus Pakistan on Tuesday reported over 900 COVID-19 cases with its Sindh and Punjab provinces being the worst hit amid nationwide lockdown The country's army had ordered the deployment of all available troops and medical resources according to requirements in order to contain the fast spreading deadly virus. Meanwhile, residents in Pakistan's Karachi city expressed concern over the lockdown as they fear losses during the period and expect proper guidelines from the authorities in this time of pandemic. जो भी फैसले किए जा रहे हैं वो किसी बाउंड्रीज के थ्रू करने चाहिए बेसिकली और अगर वो फैसले किए जा रहे हैं इकदाम किए जा रहे हैं तो कमेटीज के थ्रू या जो उनकी जो है यूनियन है उनके थ्रू उनको जो है वो गाइड करना चाहिए यहाँ कोई आज पता नहीं है लोग आ रहे हैं कुछ बंद करवा रहे हैं कुछ पुलिस वाले आ रहे हैं बंद करवा रहे हैं ना यूनियन की तरफ से कुछ आया है इकदाम हमारी तरफ ना किसी इसलिए आधे लोग शटर खोल के बैठे हुए आधे लोग नहीं बैठे हुए Sindh on March 22nd became the first province in Pakistan to forcefully start a 15 days lockdown with police and other security forces as the number of coronavirus cases in the province continued to increase. Addressing a press conference earlier, Sindh's chief minister Murad Ali Shah said that infected people are being observed well and that citizens should take full precautions to cope with the outbreak. Punjab and other provinces later on March 23rd also announced the lockdown until March 31st. Moving on, despite abundant water resources, the gruesome condition of water scarcity has become a major concern for the people in the illegally occupied region of Gilgil Baltistan. A protest was held recently by locals to raise their voice over the issue. An acute water shortage has hit Gilgit Baltistan, a region under Pakistan's illegal control, leaving thousands of residents affected for months now. Residents in Gilgit Baltistan recently held a protest against water scarcity, especially shortage of drinking water, to bring to the attention of the authorities, which they claimed was paying no heed to their fate. The protesters warned that if the government does not resolve the issue, they will escalate their agitation. पानी आपका बेसिक नेसेसिटी में है अगर ये पानी इनको नहीं मिलता है तो हम किस चीज़ की तो कर रहे हैं एमरजेंसी डिक्लेयर कर दे हमने अभी एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन से बात कर दी है दस पंद्रह दिनों के अंदर अंदर ये मसला हल होना चाहिए एमरजेंसी डिक्लेरेशन में उससे अगर उसके बाद हल नहीं होता है तो ये धरना बढ़ जाएगा Gilgit Baltistan has abundant water resources which can easily meet energy needs of the region. However, corrupt administration under Pakistan's rule has failed to work on the issues. The glacier, which is principal water source, has also become highly vulnerable to negative impacts of climate change. बहुत दिनों से हमारे घर में पानी नहीं है. पानी हमें पीने के लिए भी नहीं है और use करने के लिए People in Gilgit Baltistan that has been occupied for more than 70 years now by Pakistan are finding it hard to make ends meet due to the inefficient policies and unfair taxation. In news from Afghanistan, the United States has slashed to 1 billion dollar in assistance to Afghanistan while threatening further reductions in all forms of cooperation after the country's rival leaders failed to agree on forming an united government. This decision was made by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Monday after he made an unannounced urgent visit to Kabul to meet Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and his political rival Abdullah Abdullah. 
U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has announced $1 billion cut in U.S. aid to Afghanistan after he failed to convince Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and his political rival Abdullah Abdullah to end a feud that has helped jeopardize a U.S.-led peace effort. Pompeo in a statement said the United States deeply regrets that Ghani and Abdullah were unable to agree on an inclusive government. He added that their failure has harmed U.S.-Afghan relations and sadly dishonors those Afghan and Americans who have sacrificed their lives and treasure. Pompeo's statement came as he flew home from his Kabul visit on Monday, which aimed to end competing claims to the presidency by Ghani and Abdullah, and win their agreement to form a united government in Afghanistan. The U.S., which pays billions every year towards Afghan budget, including the country's defense forces, was calling out Afghan leaders to reach consensus just after the political turmoil started in the country. The peace deal, signed in February between Washington and Taliban, is already stalled over release of prisoners by Kabul and the Taliban. Nepal on Tuesday imposed a week-long countrywide lockdown as a precautionary measure against novel coronavirus with scarcer public presence on roads. Shopping malls and markets down their shutters after the government announcement. Nepal has so far reported only two cases of the coronavirus out of 610 people tested. Nepali government has imposed a nationwide lockdown for a week starting from Tuesday in an effort to control the spread of deadly coronavirus in the country. The decision came after a teenager who returned from France recently was tested positive for the infection on Monday, taking the total number of COVID-19 cases to two in Nepal. With the nationwide lockdown, all 77 chief district officers of Nepal are asked to implement the decision and take strict actions against people violating the rule. The violators may land in jail for a month or fined. Nepal Sarkarli, as a Bianas Hobaji, what a lockdown was in India, Gara, so Susan Sazan Gari, circular by Elsa, Ami Soktokma Kodegasam, Batama Gudne, Razamagama Gudne, Savai Sazan, Lagat, Poydal, India, Atro, La Summit, Amilio, Swastagolayo, Cosalajan Dala Duhadino Hojagoina, Tobam, Swastagolayo, Logram Gorevane. During the lockdown, people are barred from leaving their homes except for essential purposes. Operation of all private and public vehicles except those acquiring permits or those used by health personnel and security forces have been completely barred. Domestic flights are also not allowed during the lockdown period except by security agencies or by the government. The government has also asked private sector industries except essential supplies to send employees and workers on leave. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka, the number of COVID-19 cases in Sri Lanka rose to 95 as per latest data by the Health Ministry, while no deaths have been reported so far. In a bid to combat the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic, the Sri Lankan government has extended its nationwide curfew till March 27th. Sri Lanka has extended its nationwide curfew to combat the outbreak of coronavirus pandemic, with total cases of infection in the country reaching 95 as on Tuesday. The countrywide curfew imposed last week has now been extended in districts including Colombo, Jaffna and Manar until Friday and in all other districts until Thursday, according to a statement by the President's office on Monday. Sri Lankan President Gotapaya Rajapaksa also took to Twitter informing the development. He requested retailers to serve all customers despite the curfew until all are able to obtain their basic necessities and urged the public to maintain the safe distance during all shopping activities. Earlier, Gotapaya Rajapaksa on Monday pledged to contribute 5 million US dollars to the SAR COVID-19 emergency fund set up under the leadership of India for the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation or SAR countries to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a Twitter message thanked the Sri Lankan President for the contribution. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash SAsia Newsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.